So we're going to move on now to a former Labour councillor, uh, Amir Latif, uh, from, uh, he's from Cowley in Oxfordshire, uh, who stepped down because of this, who quit the Labour Party because of this. Uh, why do you think, uh, Amir Amal, it's so important that for Keir Starmer to change his stance uh, and to start calling for a ceasefire. Uh, what does that mean to uh, Muslims like you? Hi, good afternoon, Kevin. Thanks for having me on. Um, I think it is imperative that Starmer, not only Starmer, but every, uh, per every person of good conscience and uh, wanting international peace and justice does call for a ceasefire, an immediate ceasefire. We've seen awful devastation both uh, beginning with uh, an attack on killing innocent Israeli civilians, but also now the constant bombardment of uh, innocent Palestinian civilians as well in the Gaza Strip. And we mustn't forget the absolute devastation that's been caused in Gaza. You know, 2.2 million people under constant bombardment. We have mil uh, uh, over half of those are children. Many of them are now homeless. We must remember this is a population where 80% of them before the events of recent weeks were living on, uh, on humanitarian aid in any case. So now to have uh, quite so many uh, people who are suffering and dying, um, it's, it's just unconscionable that we would call for anything other than a ceasefire. There's two things to remember here. One is the, the importance of trying to bring an end to the current suffering. Um, and that's why an immediate ceasefire is needed. The second thing really to remember is the importance of um, a long-term solution. You know, uh, events have escalated since October the 7th, but we must remember that history didn't start on October the 7th. This is a, a conflict that's well, been going well, on. Well, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, th 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 this is often said, and, you know, it's a fair point. Uh, yeah, it's a very checkered and well, just the point it's I was going very, to go on to make. Well, let, like, no, let me ask you this, Amma, Amma, let me ask you this. We can all, we can all go back, all oh, 75 years of oppression, everybody says that. But what we're talking... I was trying to go forward, actually. I was trying to go forward. Okay. What I was going to say is if we want peace in the future and what we should hope for that region is that every Israeli citizen and civilian can live with peace and hope and every Palestinian civilian can live with peace well, and hope. Well, here, here, here the only that. way that's going to be brought about is through dialogue and through constructive yeah, dialogue yeah, and bringing peace about and that is not going to continue. Agree, 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 but that, agreed, but that isn't going to happen now, uh, Amma. Uh, uh, 20 days ago when uh, uh, Hamas crossed the border, invaded Israel, some of them by paraglider, and brutally butchered 1,400 innocent Israelis. And Keir Starmer came out and said, we stand with Israel and uh, we uh, stand by Israel's right to defend itself. Did you agree with him then? I don't think Israel's right to defend itself is No, but did you agree with Keir Starmer? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know why that question is being put to me in that way. Of course I did. There isn't any... There, no one has... Do you agree uh, with it now? Me. Do you agree with it now? I think the question really now that we're discussing is whether is, there's a collect, collective punishment is... is well, that is, is it's not collective punishment. It's, well, it's, it it's, they're laying siege to an enemy. It isn't, well, technically, think... it isn't technically collective punishment because te well, collective, mean... collective punishment is a war crime and as things stand, Israel, well, has, Israel has not committed a war crime. This is laying um... siege to an enemy. If the um... enemy is Hamas and Hamas choose to uh, situate themselves among their fellow people, among innocent Palestinian citizens, that's Hamas's fault, not Israel's. Well, I'm glad that we can agree that collective punishment is a war crime because actually that is what we're seeing. Yes, which which, which Israel, uh, which Israel un under international law, it, but but Amma, Israel is under area, international law. Outside. Don't keep talking when I'm talking. There's no point, is there? Israel no, totally under international question, law, uh, under really international. Oh God! To answer a question. And then you're talking what? over me. Uh, no, no, you no. I'm trying to. I'm trying to ask you a question. Oh, I'm trying you to did, point. I was trying to answer it. You okay. Like Israel has not committed any war crimes so far, has it? Well, I don't, I don't know. I think that is being brought into question. Well, you I just accused them of collective punishment. That's a war crime. I said it's being brought into question. I think there is collective punishment going on. You what suspect. Must remember is that you the suspect. Gaza, okay. The Gaza. Absolutely. The Gaza Strip is an area the size of the Isle of Wight approximately. The Isle of Wight has about 150,000 people in it. Mm. The Gaza Strip has about 2.2 million people in it, over half of whom are under at the age of 18. You know, this is an area that already has had huge suffering 
and there is collective punishment and that's why we're seeing huge numbers well you're accusing dying. you're accusing there uh, uh, israel now of something uh, it has not been found guilty of you're accusing israel of a war crime it is not a war crime to I'm lay to, no uh, Emma, can you let me finish the sentence ever uh, it is not a war crime uh, to lay siege to your enemy I think we'll have to agree to disagree no, on this. No, 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 it isn't a war crime. That's a fact. You can't disagree with that. That's a fact. Look, I let me ask you this. Would, would you prefer right now uh, the Keir Starmer, who uh, you clearly disapprove of, hence you've left the Labour Party, would you prefer that uh, Jeremy Corbyn was the leader? I don't think this is an issue of who's the current leader of the party. It's the, the issue is what position the leader of the party takes. And I think, you know, this is, uh, this is the, the problem that Keir Starmer has in that he, I wouldn't frame this as a left versus right issue, a Muslim versus Jewish issue. This is a humanitarian rights issue. This is what we're seeing is killing of innocent civilians and any good person of good conscience will want an end to that. And by that's Hamas, why, by Hamas you mean, yeah? And Israel, the Israeli government is also under con constant bombardment of innocent civilians and we should, we should want an end. It's killing. retaliating, it's at war. Uh, in, it's killing in innocent it's, it, civilians. No, it, it's a very, it's horrible. Mm. I, we all sympathise. We, we all weep for those poor innocent Palestinians who haven't done anything wrong in the Gaza Strip, who are just trying to get by and they're getting killed. That is terrible. Uh, but it is Hamas's fault, and Israel is retaliating. And for the record, Israel has not committed any war crimes yet. Well, I think, as I say, I've, we've made the, we've been over this point. We'll have to agree to disagree on that. But the point I was well, trying no, to make... Well, no, you can't is, disagree because it's a fact. I think the, the, I think the point I made... Do you agree is that, that a, a, a nation has a right uh, to lay siege to its enemy? Because under international law, it does. I think we'll have to agree to disagree on this, Kevin. <laughs> OK. Uh, but let's go back. Uh, if I, we could just conclude uh, on the essential thing I want to ask you about and by the way i respect you uh for your opinions and, and for what you've done uh i don't necessarily agree with your standpoint but you've uh, made your position very clear uh just try to sum up for us Emma, uh just how much trouble uh keir starmer is in over this because i had an imam on my show a couple of days ago and he said to me he said make no mistake if Keir Starmer doesn't join the calls for a ceasefire, he's in danger of losing all five million Muslim votes. Well, I think it's important that, uh, to recognise that I think the Muslim vote for Labour has collapsed. There's a survey out recently which showed that 71% of uh, British Muslims would pro likely have voted for Labour before these events. That's now fallen down to 5%. Mm. That's a 66% reduction in the vote. But what I think is important to note is that I don't think this is a Jewish issue or a Muslim issue. This is an, about human rights. You know, I come from Oxford, and in Oxford now we've had nine... Labour Party councillors resign, the vast majority of whom are not from a Muslim background. Mm -hmm. Oxford itself is not particularly, uh, it doesn't particularly have a large Muslim background, a uh, large Muslim community. Um, but actually, th this is uh, the Labour uh, administration here has now lost the majority within the city council. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason is that people up and down this country uh, are not happy with the stance that the national leadership mm -hmm. has taken. If you look at the polls, over three quarters of people across the UK would support a ceasefire. And I, it's it's uh, really undefe well, indefensible okay. yeah, all right, he's I'm taking a position like that. Fa fair enough. Uh, but uh, I'm a bit worried that people seem to be forgetting what Hamas did 20 days ago, which was grotesque. Uh, but uh, once again, uh, a spirited uh, debate, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, and I, I do respect you for what you've done. And thank you very much for your time. Amar Latif, their former Labour councillor, he's quit the Labour Party. Yeah.